So, I think I just locked myself out. I, or, yeah, I did. I did. Um, I gotta get the snow plowing or I'm gonna get fired. So, let me turn you around and see what I got. It's not a lot, but it's enough to be annoying. And I need to measure. I'm gonna put a pull back on this guy. And I think there's some holes right here and right here. Austin and Phil just cut me a piece of white oak that I'm going to put from here all the way across. So let me see what I got. <laughs> Yep, they cut. So now I need to measure, I think it's 96 inches. So my plan is, is to take the piece of angle iron and put it on here, here, and put the piece of white oak and bolt the white oak to the angle iron. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. So, yeah, they cut me a piece that's eight inches. I think this is a little, little wider than eight inches, but that's all right. Let me see how it looks. So one of the challenges with uh, the snow pushers is if you don't put you can't back drag unless you put that piece on there i can't remember what they call it i'll, I'll put it on the screen here but uh it was like 15 1600 bucks it's probably a reason It'd be a lot simpler than building something out of white oak but uh, i'll show you why you need it turn you around so any snow that's up against this fence i want to pull it back Right now the only way I could do that is put the bucket on, use the bucket to pull away from the fence all the way down, away from the building, away from and out of the loading dock, which is probably the most critical spot that we need to be able to back scrape out of here. I do have a little parking lot here, but we do need to pull, pull it out of there. So then you can use the snow pusher and push it. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I might be trying to do something. I should probably plow this first. But I don't feel like switching back and forth between the bucket and the uh, snow pusher. That's just me. Um, yeah, I don't even know if that white oak's going to hold. Uh, we'll find out. I probably should use the bucket to show everybody why it's a pain in the butt. But I'm hoping you, the smart viewer, can see. Yeah, I can see that, that being a pain, Nate. So... Yeah, I'm gonna go take that angle iron to the farm, cut it on the bandsaw. Uh, it sounds like Phil and Austin cut a piece that's eight inches wide. So let's go to the farm, get this done. So I'm in our uh, little shop here, looking for some uh, angle iron, because I'm going to, uh, I need something that'll have enough meat on it to hold that white oak and uh, catch that bolt, because I, I'm trying to, have enough strength, you know, so I love stainless. I got a piece of stainless angle here, but I don't think it's long enough that when I drill a hole in that white oak, I'm going to have a lot of meat. There's going to be a lot of pressure on that piece of white oak as I pull it back. And I don't want it just the bolt popping off the end of the wood. You see what I mean? So I found something over here where, you know, I could take this piece of angle. It's just a little bit wider. So I could take this piece of angle, put it on the bandsaw, cut it, you know, spray paint it, try to match the yellow, I don't know, maybe just paint it black, everything looks good black, so, and then kind of compare, you can see, maybe they're the same. It just sure seems like this one's bigger. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Listen, if everything's equal, you go with stainless. That's just the way it is. Okay, you can see, that's about a half inch half inch bigger so I'm going with this piece here so I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the farm I'm gonna get the lumber uh, the white oak that we'll need and stick it in the back of my truck and when we get back I'm gonna start the tractor warm it up all excited first time to use the LS uh, pushing snow and uh, you know this is typical Nate Bissell I start a project in the middle of a job and uh, I'm a good starter I'm a terrible finisher. I, I can start things like there's nobody's business. 
just go after it. And um, I just need more. I need to work more on the follow through end. Um, I said I'd be the snowplow guy, and here I am chasing down white oak to make a back drag that probably won't work as well as if I put a little more thought into it. So I think I think I'm gonna make a back drag out of white oak. And I did look up those back drags. They're only like 721 bucks for the right thing, but that is nowhere near as fun as using your sawmill to mill up some white oak to make a back drag and make YouTube content for people that also want to back drag but don't want to spend you know, five, seven hundred bucks. Um, you know, white oak's pretty durable, pretty water resistant, and darn it, it looks and smells cool. So, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. A little bit of snow. So, yeah, Phil and Austin hooked me up here. Yeah, that's a pretty thick piece of white oak. I mean, if this thing breaks, it's, you know, I'm sure that tractor will have enough strength to break it. But a little medullary raise here. But I like it. I think I'm just going to use this guy. We're just going to go simple in the first back drag. But uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to use this 8 incher. I'm sure it'll wear, you know, a corner of that wood down to a flat, flat, you know, flat side. But uh, yeah, I'm going to use this. Just see if I can make version 1.0. Keep it simple. And, uh, yeah, let's see if we can keep it simple. This will work. I like it. Let me load this up, and then we'll cut the uh, angle iron on the bandsaw here. Something tells me I might have some trimming to do. A little fresh, baby. So let's get this tractor started. Got the keys. Let's get it started and warmed up. Um, then we can push some snow. First time using this tractor. So uh, if anybody's got tips for me while I'm running this tractor and you see something, uh, hey, there's a better way to run that snow pusher or you know any tips, tricks, I'm, I'm open for it. So uh, yeah, I hope you, uh, hope you guys enjoy it. I know I will. It's frozen over pretty good. I just didn't. All right, let's do this. Come on, baby. I do know I want heat. I want defrost. So once we get her started. Start it right up. Yeah, this will allow me to talk to you while we're running the tractor and plowing some snow so I'm gonna let this run for a bit and see if we'll melt the snow off this is heavy Friends, in my haste, I forgot to push the record button on my phone while I was using the uh, the grizzly, the metal bandsaw there to cut that uh, angle iron. And uh, I also uh, painted it black. And uh, sometimes my phone will hide files from me and I got to go look for them. But uh, in editing this video, just this quick interruption, just to let you know, I, I missed all that. I don't know where it is. But I did want to let you know, I used this, uh, this box here, um, this HelloFresh box. I am not sponsored by HelloFresh. Um, however, I was watching Outdoors of the Morgans. I saw that they uh, um, had a coupon code. I believe it is Outdoors70. Um, and we did it. And I got to tell you, I love it. It is uh, kind of like owning a bandsaw mill. It's way better than I thought it would be. 
And uh, I don't know how many months we've been doing it now, but uh, it's good. Like my middle son, when he was four, uh, went to his mother and said, Mommy, are superheroes real? You know, like chefs. <laughs> so my middle son, if it wasn't for him and Hello Fresh, we would all starve. He, uh, when the box comes, there's three meals in there. It's, uh, it's kind of exciting to see what they send you. And um, it's way uh, less expensive than going out to dinner. And uh, it's kind of nice eating meals at home as a family. Anyways, that brief intermission was about uh, not uh, pushing record. But I thought, why not? This Hello Fresh box was how I brought those pieces of angle iron back. So back to the show. Feels like Wayne's world. It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. I can't talk about it anymore. It's giving me a headache. Here, take two of these. Ah, new print, little, yellow, different. We're not sponsored. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna punch a little, little center punch there on both of these. This guy here, so I know where to drill. And then do the same thing on the other side. Scratch, just a little scratch. Yep. Yep. Do the same thing on the other side. And I need to make sure the bolt I'm picking, the diameter will fit. Yep, right diameter. Well, that was good. Everything in his pocket. Got water on it. Can you see better? Hope so. White oak, eight bolts, eight washers. bring this down because I actually want to put an edge on this thing with the uh, saw so I'm gonna bring this down to give me some wear I'd like to have you know two inches of wear from here so let's see how it does I gotta go get bigger ones. These are too short. Let's do it. Back 
the one. We're through. So what I'm trying to do now is just take this off so it's not riding this on the ground. I'm gonna leave a little bit so it's not a sharp edge. But I'm gonna run real parallel to this. I'm gonna take that measurement. I'm gonna copy it down on the other end. Let's make it an inch and a quarter. So we'll put a mark for inch and a quarter all the way down. I just cut an edge at the same angle. Now I know the snow will build up under here, but I figure over time that's gonna just wear out. It's kind of a pretty medullary raise there. See how this side looks. About the same. So over time, I just think that's gonna wear down. But yeah, let's test her out. It's Friday, 5.30, just loaded uh, Brian up with some empty drums, some drums of syrup to go to a customer, and uh, we are going to load 80 maple bourbon barrels that uh, Ralph and I are taking up to Montreal on Monday. Well, yeah, Monday morning, so as a plan, 80 bourbon barrels, let's get her done.
Well, that's bold. 